for an important announcement. The giant locusts have reached the Chicago South Side and nearby suburbs. Repeat. The giant locusts have reached the Chicago South Side and nearby suburbs. Hold your fire, man! Fire! I love these old movies, these old science fiction movies. Partly because I'm a biologist. But those grasshoppers don't end up uh, eating the serious tower. Yeah. Michael LaBarbera is a unique biologist. To him, giants and monsters are favorite subjects. One aspect of what makes, I think, a really good scientist is keeping the curiosity alive and uncensored um, into your adult life. Some of us don't censor it enough and watch horror movies and try to analyze the monsters. When La Barbara studies monsters, one thing he considers is their size. He's curious to explore what happens when creatures become gigantic. For example, if you take a gorilla and blow it up to the size of King Kong, the barber calculates that its bones would be enlarged a few hundred times. But its weight would increase more than 14,000 times. Kong, in other words, would have a gigantic weight problem. His excess fat would crush his bones, even if he was standing still. Giant grasshoppers would have a similar problem. In the beginning of the end with the giant grasshoppers, as those grasshoppers walk down the street, you ought to see the legs visibly bowing if they don't exactly buckle because of the sheer size of their body. In this movie, them, with the giant ants, the same would have been true. It's clear that size is a very basic variable in biological systems. La Barbara traces his ideas about monsters back 350 years ago to the Italian astronomer Galileo. To Galileo, giants were strictly fantasy. To him, nature was not governed by magic, but by logic. Galileo illustrated that when you increase the size of an animal, its bones would grow large, but its weight increases disproportionately. Galileo realized that this simple mathematical relationship between size and weight is not only true for animals, but in fact, for all things. Take the sugar cube or any other shape and you increase it in size, um, making it larger and larger but keeping shape constant. What happens is that areas increase, of course, as you increase in size, but volume increases at a faster rate than area does. To see how this works, imagine a sugar cube that is three times bigger than a standard cube. The cube will be three times wider, three times deeper, and three times taller. The area has increased from one face per side to nine faces per side. Area increased nine times. But the volume has increased from one to 27 cubes. 
volume or weight has increased 27 times. This simple relationship can tell us a lot more about plants and animals, and even ourselves. If a human becomes gigantic, the size of his bones will grow. But their weight increases faster, and they can find it difficult to move. Each species is a unique size, and mathematics tells us why an ant and a gorilla can't transform into giant monsters. To be a giant, creatures need to be able to carry a tremendous and crushing weight. Dinosaurs were built to be big. Some had massive bones bigger than tree trunks to support their weight. All creatures, large and small, do share one surprising thing in common. As we move, we all come uncomfortably close to breaking our bones. And that's true of most animals. If you actually look at animals doing their normal behaviors, what you find is an interesting regularity. Mammalian locomotor systems, the bones, the muscles, are put together in such a way as to always keep the maximum stresses that are exerted on the bone about a quarter to a third of the breaking stress of the bone. In other words, what they're doing in their normal behaviors is loading their bones to stresses that are approximately 25 to 30 percent of the stresses at which those bones will break. And this applies across the board. Mammals as small as chipmunks to as large as elephants. This speaks to me of a real elegance of design. The tightness of the design is much tighter than an engineer would typically design a building or a structure, with very few exceptions. Uh, engineering structures are never built to exert stresses so close to the failure stresses as we see used routinely in mammals. To keep stress from breaking our bones, all creatures do something incredibly simple. We shift our posture and change the way we move. What you see in horse, for example, the horse would start out at low speeds using a walk. And as it moves faster, the stresses do indeed increase. But they increase up to this 25 to 30% of braking strength. And then the horse changes the way it moves. It moves from a walk to a trot. And when it moves from the walk to the trot, changing the way it puts its legs down and picks them up, the stresses drop. As it moves faster in a trot, the stresses increase yet again till we hit this magic 25 to 30%. And again, it changes its gait. It moves into a canter. Stresses drop again. As it moves faster in the canter, the stresses build up again until we have another gait change into a gallop. Mathematics reveals that as we move, stress increases on our bones. And to relieve the stress, we change our posture. The way we hold our body. This simple idea about motion and posture is also helping La Barbara understand how dinosaurs must have moved. 
One of the more interesting uses of this is to look at an animal the size of a Tyrannosaur. Rather than being bird-like in the way they move, they were much more like mammals, with the legs held under the body and straight during locomotion. Mathematics is changing the way we understand these animals as having held their bodies, and thus changing the way we think about how they hunted, how they lived. The more you know, the deeper you'll see, the more you will be able to extract this underlying structure and beauty.